welcome you once again in this session and in this session we are going to look at the invertebrates if we try to go backwards and try to remind ourselves we say that living things are divided into two groups we have the organisms that have uh, the backbone and then other organisms that do not have the backbones those ones we say that that have backbones we call them the vertebrates and those ones without backbone we call them invertebrates and in the vertebrates we have only one phylum that is phylum codata and we have most of the phylums in the invertebrate among the phylums that the phylums that we have in the invertebrates we have the phylum polyphyla have phylum mollusks phylum annelida we have uh, phylum echinoderms we have phylum platehelmides phylum anthropoda and phylum nidaria so we are now going to start to look at all these phylums which are under the invertebrates and uh, we shall start with the uh, phylum annelida these are segmented body worms and uh, examples that we have in this phylum annelida some of the organisms that we find here we find here the earthworm there is uh, the leech and then we also have the ragworm these organisms have characteristics that resemble or that are similar in all the organisms and these characteristics are the ones that we want to discuss today one of the characteristic of these organisms which are found in phylum and elida they have a bilateral symmetrical body by a bilateral symmetrical body we are talking of the body that can be cut into two identical and similar parts so for example if you get an earthworm and lay it on the paper or a tile straight you cut it in the middle starting from the head up to the tail you will find that the left hand side resembles the right hand side that's what we are calling the bilateral symmetrical such that when you cut it into the middle the left side is similar to the right hand side so all these organisms that are found in the phylum annelida they have a bilateral symmetrical body and you'll find that all their bodies are divided into a number of similar rings along the body you'll find rings from the head up to the tail they are rings that are on the body that is another characteristic that puts all these organisms into the same group and you'll find that the head tapers to a point whereby the head is moving as if it is tapering as if it is a nail coming to a nail chip that is what we are referring to as the tapering of the head which the inclines up to a particular point whereas if you look at their tails their tails are broad and they are flat now there is a reason why the head is tapering and the tail is broadening and becoming more flat you'll find that they use the pointed nose or the head to drill into the soil and they use the rear tail which is broad and flat to press 
tightly against the balls or the balls the, the holes you can see that for example if you're trying to pull a worm out of the soil it becomes a little bit hard it's because of the flattened rare part or the tail and which is broad that is used to hold on the sides of the hole so that it does not come out of the hole this is a characteristics to the earthworm to the leech and ragworms then you also find that on these organisms they have pores which pores secrete a slime substance and this slime substance covers the whole body and the purpose of the slime substance is to make the body slippery so that when the organism are moving between elements or materials that slime makes it smoother for them to move across those materials and then also this slime which is covered on the body it also help in the killing of the germs that may come into contact with the organism at the same time the slime is used when the organisms are in the holes when they create those holes they use this slime to cement the burrows those are the holes where they are passing so when the slime when the, when the organism passes through the barrel or barrel the slime cements the surface of the barrel such that it becomes a cemented area whereby the organism or that particular worm can pass or can use that channel another or more than once in its lifetime you will also find that they have small substances on each segment which we call the bristles or sometimes they are referred to as the chattel these bristles are the ones that are used for locomotion they are on each segment at the underneath of the insect i mean of the worm and these bristles are the ones that are used during locomotion they assist the worm to move along the burrows and also on land and you'll find that the worms do not have a true respiratory organ they don't have a true respiratory organ and when it comes to sexual reproduction they reproduce by sexual reproduction whereas at the same time they can be hermaphrodites whereby they have both sexes on the same body the female and the male sex and you'll find that these organisms the earthworm the leech and the ragworm they have a fully complete digestive system or the gut which runs from the mouth to the anus and when you look at their body from the head to the tail the body is separated into three sections for all of these organisms they have the body which is separated into three sections and they also have a well developed nervous system when you look also at their body the body has got a cavity which we refer to as a true colon it has a true colon or a body cavity inside now the body has more than two cell layers it has more tissues 
and it has more organs. Now, those are the characteristics of the segmented bodied worms, which are under phylum annelida. We have said that the phylum annelida contains or includes the earthworm, the ragworm, and the leeches. And we have seen that their body is bilaterally symmetrical. The body is divided into a number of rings. The body has more than two cell layers, tissues and organs. The head tapers to a point and the tail is broad and flat. We have also seen that the nose is used to drill into the soil, whereas the flat and broad tail is used to press tightly onto the sides of the barrel. They have pores on their body, that pores which produce the slime, and the slime that is used to make the body slippery and at the same time to make or to kill the germs that may come into contact with the body and also the slime can be used to cement the barrels where the animal or the organism pass and we have also seen that the body is divided into three sections and also they have a well-developed nervous system they have a well-developed digestive system or the gut from the mouth to the anus. They have bristles on every segment, which we call the chattel, and they are used in locomotion. And we have seen that they reproduce by sexual reproduction or by hermaphroditic reproduction. So that is all about the segmented bodied worms which are referred to as ane lead phylum next time when we come back we shall look at another phylum still which is under the invertebrate and that one that we are going to look at next time will be phylum H. thank you